What is the shape? It's a uh, red, a uh, three-sided. Oh, uh, the angles add up to one hundred and eighty degrees. Just say it, man. It's like a cheese sandwich. Uh, you eat for lunch. Ooh, it's a bloody triangle. Just say it, man. This is what Apis is basically doing. He's saying the most pathetic things to avoid what's obvious. That this building prophecy of the Prophet wasallam is actually mind-blowing. The prophecy goes something like this. Quote, he said, Then tell me about its signs. He said, When a slave woman gives birth to her mistress, when you see the barefoot, naked, destitute shepherds competing in making tall buildings. I gotta be honest, he always chats bull, but he takes it to the Apus level here. Apus could literally pull out a video titled, Islam is false, cause... Oh, I can't be bothered to say. What, what exactly is a tall building? A three-floor house in 7th century Arabia would have been an exceptionally tall building. A watchtower is a tall building. Blocks put upon each other without purpose is a tall building. Tall building is very vague. They but is it though? I think even in the 7th century, um, Arabs were pretty connected by trade and travel to other sophisticated civilizations and had a fairly good idea what a tall building was. It wasn't the Stone Age, for God's sakes. There was the Sasanian Empire and the Byzantine Empire nearby. The Romans had built the Colosseum by then. The pyramids were literally next door. So the idea that we don't know what the Prophet ﷺ meant when he said tall buildings is highly disingenuous. He clearly clearly meant very tall buildings and not three-storey mud houses. When you see the barefoot, naked, destitute shepherds competing in making tall buildings... It doesn't really work, does it? You kind of have to have the comprehension skills of a dyslexic if you're going to pretend these uh, hadith aren't being specific enough in talking about extremely poor people. We also don't really have a precise, consistent description of who it is who will be competing in building tall buildings. So what are we supposed to do with these super vague words? Shepherd, destitute, herdsman, naked, barefoot. Come on, any more clearer and you're literally peeping inside Apis's empty head? And could the Prophet wasallam have meant watchtowers, giant cathedrals and pyramids that have always existed, as Apis asserts? Therefore, what the hell so miraculous about the prophecy? No, no, because there are two specific conditions to the prophecy, but Apis would like you to pay no attention to those, because... It's vague, vague, vague. No prophecy to see here, folks. Keep scrolling. Condition one, it's going to be very poor people who've always been poor, but specifically poor at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. It's talking about vast wealth reaching the once common shepherd. Hence the quote, when you see a woman giving birth to her mistress. And two, they will vigorously compete with each other in building tall buildings. So the prophecy is quite specific. The prophecy is conditional. It happened forever. People built tall buildings. They competed in building tall buildings before Muhammad and after Muhammad. The pyramids, many temples in Asia, the lighthouse of Alexandria, ziggurats, cathedrals, churches, and so on. So why else is the prophecy not referring to pyramids and religious towers that we've seen throughout history? Well, because the prophecy is specifying that these structures will be built by common people. Quote, barefoot, naked, destitute shepherds, end quote. Whereas big structures were traditionally built by pharaohs and kings, usually for religious purposes, and then government purposes, since they were the only ones who could afford it. For example, the lighthouse of Alexandria, built by Ptolemy II, Philadelphus, in 280 to 247 BC, estimated to have been 330 foot in overall height. The Buddhist uh, Jetavan Arma, 
stupa in Sri Lanka at 400 foot. It was the world's tallest stupa and third tallest structure in the world, built by King Mahasena of Anuradhapura in 273 to 301 AD. The Lincoln Cathedral in the UK, upon its completion at 100 meters, 520 foot high in 1311, it became the tallest building in the world, the first building to hold that title after the Great Pyramid of Giza and held it for 238 years until its spire collapsed in 1548. Lincoln Cathedral was supplied as the world's tallest structure when the US Congress funded the Washington Monument in 1884. Did you know at 481 feet the pyramids were the tallest structures in the world for over 3,800 years? OMG! So no, Apis is categorically wrong. Privately funded tall structures haven't really been built forever. Certainly not built in competition between individuals, let alone by very poor people who were once goat herders, or the pyramids wouldn't have remained the tallest structures for over 3,800 years. In fact, for millennia, the tallest structures in the world were all religious buildings, ziggurats, cathedrals, mosques, etc. Huge projects funded out of royal coffers, and certainly not bankrolled by commoners with private money. In fact, the common man competing with building tall towers is a relatively modern phenomena. Indeed, it is only in the 19th century that common people would finally accrue enough private money to build skyscrapers for purposes besides religious reasons or via royal decree. Hey, remember when Ali the shepherd who owns four camels built a pyramid? Ah, uh, yeah. As I said, the Ahadith are actually remarkably specific. Now, Apis says the owners of the Middle Eastern buildings today are not shepherds, so the prophecy fails. Uh, okay, the Prophet lived 1400 years ago, so when he was talking about the shepherds of his time, his time, one day building tall buildings, he was talking about what? The descendants of those poor 7th century shepherds. And this phenomena is, it seems, happening today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. It's only now, in the 21st century, we're all witnessing the descendants of those poor shepherds of the 7th century, post-oil boom, post-discovery of oil, and new money finally having enough wealth to fulfil this remarkable prophecy. For example, the two main ruling families of Abu Dhabi and Dubai, the al Nahyan and al Maktoum today, belong to the house of Al-Falahi and Al-Falasi, respectively, and they fall under the wider Bani Yas tribal confederation, who once populated the, quote, harsh desert environment which led to the emergence of the quote versatile tribesmen nomadic groups who subsisted due to a variety of economic activities including animal husbandry agriculture and hunting it continues quote these formed tribal groupings whose names are still carried by modern emirates including the Yas and alabu fala of abu dhabi and so on the Albu Muhair are another tribe of the United Arab Emirates, closely associated with the Bani Yas of Abu Dhabi. Quote, at the turn of the 20th century, the Albu Muhair still following a Bedouin lifestyle. The Mazari is a tribe of the United Arab Emirates, a subsection of the Bani Yas, and formed the majority of the Bedouin component. They were herdsmen, and records show they settled into an agrarian existence. So as you can see, the builders of skyscrapers in the Middle East today have only recently left their harsh, nomadic, Bedouin lifestyles. So, what is so remarkable about this prophecy of the Prophet Wasallam? Well, take yourself back to the 7th century. Would this situation have been conceivable to your average person of the 7th century? I don't think so. If the Prophet Wasallam had said, kings and nations will compete in building tall buildings one day, well, yeah, that's kind of conceivable since emperors and nations have money and they've been doing such things for like, well, forever. But to correctly predict that it'll be the utterly destitute shepherd of the 7th century building these structures, you gotta admit, it's kind of remarkable. In fact, it's so beyond the realm of possibility that the phenomena only finally came true in modern times after a capitalism discovery of oil and globalization, or frankly, it still might not have happened. So, uh, so for over a millennia, the Prophet's 
prophecy would have seemed ludicrous. The extreme improbability of this socio-economic turnaround on the Arabian Peninsula tells us how the knowledge and perception available to the Prophet ﷺ in the 7th century must have been inspired by no less than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanallah. So the conclusion is Apis's video is a complete flop. This prophecy is not meaningless as he'd like you to think and I think deep down he knows it. His pathetic rebuttal is proof of how good a prophecy it is. He did a terrible job of debunking it. I know it sounds pretty stupid but that is an actual Muslim claim. And now you sound pretty stupid don't you? <laughs>